very much. Thank you very much. Um, you know, some few years back, we were told a story in the training too. Uh, there was a village, you know, they didn't have water. Incidentally, even today, you have several parts of Lagos <laughs> that have no water. There was no water in the village. And it became a very tough issue. People were buying water, looking for water. And then a young man assembled some drums, some tanks, and started uh, fetching water. He paid some people, a few of them, to go to fetch water from a distance of about one kilometer. And so they were bringing water, and the villagers were buying from him. It became a big business, really. He was doing so well. It was a monopoly, so to say. No other person. And then the stress of having to walk one kilometer to go and bring water was not easy for anybody to want to compete with him. And people were even envious of him. How come that he was able to get agile people who were happy going that hog to bring water for the villagers? So he was making money. Then a young person came on board and saw that there was good business in what he was doing. What did the guy do? He went to the source of the water and started constructing a pipe. For three months, this guy was constructing a pipe from the source of the water over the one kilometer distance to the village. The young man who was already in the business, who had paid people to fetch water, was mocking him. Everybody was laughing at this man. So he was a madman. How can you construct pipe from one kilometer to bring water? When somebody is doing this beer and is making so much money, and we're not even complaining because he could buy, uh, they could buy from him. But the guy Persisa was constructing his pipe. Three months, four months, he was still constructing his pipe. Five months, he bought a tank in the village where the pipe would now run into water. It took nine months for him to finish the project. Meanwhile, in these nine months, the villagers were getting water steadily from the man who was paying people to go and bring water from that distance to get the water. When he was ready with the tank and everything, and with a pumping machine that would pump the water from that distance to the village, the man reduced his price to half what the man who was doing manual labor, so to say, you know, to, to the villagers. And everybody shifted. Because one, this new water from this man is purer. You know, it's from the pipe. Two, cheaper. And there was no scarcity. There was no point at any point that, OK, uh, there's no water, water is in weight, which was the case with the previous person. And so that was how this man had made so much money and drove away the other person. Now, among these two people, who was in business and who was not in business? Who was in business? These two examples. Second, Second person. And what did he do? He did something and he was patient, isn't he? He wasn't waiting for immediate money. He took time. He was spending money. He wasn't getting it. But he was spending money because he believed. You understand? He believed in what he was doing. He had a vision. He knew that this water is a good business. But to do it, I need to do something different. He was seeing the future that nobody else was probably seeing. And he worked on it, persisted, patient, spent money, took the risk. What of you before he finished? Government or other, other things brought water to the villagers. Do you think of that? He did all that, and then the other man who was using money labor was driven out of the business, and all his boys that were using money to go and fetch water for him were employed, you know, at the site to be doing some other things for, for the person. You can see that when it comes to business life and when it comes to people, you know, there's no quick fix. There's no quick fix. And in fact, as we are going to talk about performance management, we'll see that it's also a system that you may not see the result immediately. Just like the man who was doing manual labor to get water. You may not see the benefit now, now, now. But with time, over time, you know, you invest in it, like the man invested in his piping and all that and all that. And after your investment, then you see that uh, there will be handsome reward for it eventually. OK, so we are going to start. That is just a story. That is really not the presentation. <laughs> yes. 
You see, you may be doing your best, but is it what is necessary to give you your desired outcome? You know, you will notice that in several companies, in several employees, when you ask them, they will tell you they are doing their best, isn't it? They will be wondering why the business owner is not seeing what they are doing. And in fact, we have had such complaints severally. I'm doing my best. Is it enough to just be working and be acting and be busy? You can be so busy, you can be so active, but are you getting your desired result? If the answer is no, then there's something wrong somewhere. There's something wrong somewhere. It means that we have to really identify what we are busy doing. We have to know what is the best that we can do. We have to know it. We have to deliberately sit down, think, and agree, and discuss, and say, this is what I want to do. And in fact, as an individual, if you don't sit down to plan what you want to do, for instance, if you just operate haphazardly, of course, you cannot get results. So this morning, we are going to start with this question. So, okay, what I'm doing, is it, is it giving me what I want? And if the answer is no, then we need to sit up and think of what I need to do to get what I really want. This is a quote I like a lot. Say, Cust customer satisfaction should be at the root of performance management. That when you want to manage how you work, how your employees work, you should start with how to satisfy the customers. Is it true? Who, who does not believe in this? Who say why or why not? Yes. Let's get comments. Why should we start with customer satisfaction when the customer is not the one working <laughs> in the company? We are talking about employee performance management, and we are saying that it should be rooted on the customer who is external to the company. Why? What is the relationship between the customer and the and performance management? Without the customer, you are not in business. You are not in business. Sorry. You need the customer to cooperate with you. To cooperate with you. Yes, sir. And if you don't satisfy the customer, so you need to satisfy the body to retain them. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that, we have all said correctly. But the real issue is this. You see, when you start with how satisfied the customers will be, it will determine the kind of workers you will even recruit. It will determine the kind of objectives you will set. It will determine the kind of performance you want to even manage. Do you know that if, I, if this place is a restaurant business, and I value cleanliness. Cleanliness. I want the place to be clean two, three times, four times, five times, as frequently as possible. And that is what the, the impression I want to give. When I want to recruit a cleaner, would it influence the kind of cleaner I recruit? It will. So you can see, the customer satisfaction, how I expect the customer to see me, is influencing the kind of recruitment that I'm doing. Ordinarily, you think that doesn't concern the person. So the kind of objective, the kind of performance I will expect from the cleaner is dependent on what I expect the customers to see. Are you getting the point clearly? Because I'm just using a cleaner, so it, it happens for every other person. So I get a cleaner, this is what I want my customers to experience, and so this is what I want the cleaner to do. What are we going to take home, you know? After this seminar, all of us present here should be able to explain the difference between performance management and appraisal. We should be able to illustrate how to set smart objectives for self, for ourselves too. You know, a lot of business owners, you can't even be alone in your business, or you have one or two staff working with you. You need to set objectives for your own self. If you assume that because you are the owner, all what you want to do is in your head, you won't put it down, it will be a mistake. You also plan that you're going to spend so much, so much. At the end of the day, there's a gap, isn't it? Yeah. If you're in production, it's even worse, I'm sure. It's even worse. You have budgeted to buy a bag of beans for 12000 And when you go to the market, it's 13000 Is there no gap? There's always gap everywhere. There's always a gap between actual and desired outcome. I would say the, the focus of traditional performance appraisal was, was historical. It was history. History in the sense that we look at what has happened. So we want to appraise you for the last six months, the last one year. So what did you do? And to make it worse, some companies and some business owners and managers, there won't even be any agreed objective at the beginning of the year. They just call you to come and sit down. Okay, 
uh, what did you do? You did this, you did that. No basis of the comparison. Nothing was agreed before. They just call you, sit down, and then you to appraise you on what you didn't do well and what you did well. And the purpose then really was to see whether you have performed good enough to remain in the business or on few occasions to give you some salary increase, if possible, to punish. And then it was later that I started seeing identify weakness as part of the appraisal form. It wasn't like that originally. But later you saw weaknesses identified so that they can be training, so that you can training this can be sorted out from the appraisal form. But that appraisal essentially is essentially to, to identify weakness and punish people for not performing well. But studies have shown that that reward punishment system alone is no longer enough. It doesn't work because human beings are not really machines. They have emotion, they have other things that need to be taken into account. And then we say performance should be deliberately managed consistently to close the gap between desired and actual result. You know, we have all agreed that there's always a gap. It is because of that gap, the gap between desired result and actual result, that we should manage the performance of everybody. Performance of the worker, performance of the business owner should be managed deliberately so that we can close the gap. We may not be able to eliminate the gap completely. We may not be able to get 100% of what we desired, isn't it? Yes. But we can close the gap to a level where we will be happy that, yes, we have closed the gap. This is what we can do. I just talked about appraisal. Of, this is just a history of how appraisal developed. I started with the US Army, who they were looking for people to, to disengage from the Army. That was the origin. And the companies later started using uh, that approach also, you know, to uh, find out uh, people to disengage from, from various uh, uh, companies. And then by 1960, it was becoming an issue of accountability. What can people do and all that? There are some people who are very talented, they are very skilled, and you need to manage them. You need to manage them for them to remain uh, to remain with you and to continue to be productive. This is just the history that appraiser has started long ago, many years, but the focus was on historical performance. Actually, what have you done before? And then later I said, okay, what are your weaknesses? What can we do to improve them? That was it. Now, what is performance management system? And how is it different from the appraiser we talked about? We just said appraisal is history. This table will just show you the differences. Past event said that grading, ranking, reward, promotion, sanction, whereas the other one begins with job definition and job description. You know, performance management system starts from when a job is defined, when you say you need a job, until the person retires, resigns, or leaves the company. That is performance management. Whereas appraiser is not like appraiser is when you have worked and then they want to see how well you have done. And so if you have an organization and you don't give job description to your people or to yourself, then you have not started at all. It must start with defining even the need for the job and then writing out the job description uh, for that job and then setting objective, monitoring performance, periodical review, and all that. And if you see, you can see that we have set periodical performance evaluation. That one is part of performance management. And it seems to be all that appraiser was concerned. So appraiser, in fact, is a subset. It's part of uh, performance management. Now we're going to look at objective setting, setting objective. So what is an objective? Read the first, read it, first bullet point. Don't read it. If a job objective or target is a commitment we make to achieve a specific quantity quality and level of service at a given cost within a time frame. Thank you. Read the third one. <laughs> when, you're, when you are interested in doing something, do it only when circumstances, circumstances permit. Thank you very much. You see, we are trying to define to explain what objective is. It's not the same thing as I've decided to do this. No. It's beyond that. You know, we are saying that it is a commitment. It is a commitment. And when you say commitment, it means you will do it. You will not be looking for all the good reasons 
why it cannot be done. What you find in most cases is that there are 1,001 reasons why people cannot achieve what we expected to achieve. They have, some people have ready-made answers. They are supposed to sell 20,000 naira a day. They cannot sell it. They have reasons. They, to do so. they have reasons. But we are saying that an objective is, is beyond that. It's a commitment we make to achieve a specific quantity. And that when we are committed to something, you accept no excuses. It's only result. It's not just being interested. So that's the difference. When we say objective or objective in a company, it's something serious, something that you are committed. It's like something that must be done. And if it cannot be done, there must be an acceptable reason why it cannot be done. For instance, if, you, if part of your objective is to be at work at 8 a.m., and you have decided, you have looked at your area where you live, that because of traffic, because of this, you need to leave home at 6 or at 6.30. If that is your objective, you cannot now say, oh, I don't feel like leaving home at 6.30 today. Let me leave at 7.30. You understand? It's not, it's not optional. When you leave at 7.30, you are going to arrive very late. For instance, I say you are sick. I say it's impossible for you to leave as you have planned. You must leave. Objective is a commitment. It's a commitment. Do you know as individuals, without personal commitment also, there's an issue. It's not only about companies, it's not only about the employees, it's about the manager, it's about the business owner also. What is your commitment as a human being? You know, in this country today, there is so much unemployment, there is so much issues around society, but what is your personal objective? What are you committed to doing? I used to speak to some young people. You are a young person. You have internet, you have all that. What do you do with your time? Is it to play video games? Is it to do all that? What is your commitment? Have you set an objective for yourself? that this year I want to learn this, I want to learn this, I want to learn that, and put a time to it and follow through? Have you given yourself a target, apart from giving your employees? What is the target that you give it to yourself? Do you know sometimes the company will give you a target, but you have your personal target to help you achieve that one, even do more. But if you sit down and you are just doing things without target, without objective, without commitment, you will find that the, the motivation to, to succeed will not be high. A lot of people at the beginning of the year, they make New Year resolutions. And somebody wrote a post that 95% or more of all those who do New Year resolutions, they don't follow it. I think some of us are also in that category. Because there is no commitment. No commitment. It's not an objective, really. It's a wish. You just wish. An objective is beyond a wish. I wish I, I would do this this year. That's a wish. If an objective, it will be a commitment. And we said it's beyond being interested. So we need commitment even to succeed in our individual lives. Whatever it is, you have to be committed to it. And it's, it's a little more difficult when you're on your own. Because nobody is pushing you. You understand? Nobody is going to, it's, it really, nobody is going to, to sanction you. You know, for what you have said to that you are not doing. It makes it a little more difficult, but it makes it also more interesting. Because if you can follow up your own commitment, your own objective, then things will certainly work out very okay. Yes, we are going to be having several of this kind of exercise as we go ahead. This exercise will be talking and be answering and be learning from each other. I'll be learning from you, you'll be learning from me, I'll be learning from ourselves. Yes, read it. Why is it exercise one? Why is it important to set objectives for yourself as the manager or owner of the business? Who, who will try? Well, it's not necessary. You know, we just talked about it. Why is it important? Let me hear from the D. Okay, sir. <laughs> um, setting objectives will serve as a guide and it will also serve as a discipline way for us to discipline ourselves okay. and act accordingly to achieve our goals. Okay. All right. Yes, where is we attempt? I like everybody to talk, you know. When you say something, you, you understand it more. 
when the class is interactive like that, you know, it's better. So let's hear from you. Direction. No, why should you set for yourself? You are the owner of the business. Yes, the it's not just why objective is important. The business is still your own. Why should you bother to set objective? When you are the man, you are the ogre, that's what I'm saying. Nobody's going to say where's your objective. Well, it's like a measurement tip. Okay. To show your level of performance and how you've achieved what you intend to achieve. And when you have an objective, you know where you have lapses in the business and how to overcome such lapses. I feel any business that does not have an objective is a business that is bound to fail already. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Do you know that what we are discussing actually applies personally to yes. as an individual? What is your own objective for this year? <laughs> you understand? What is your own personal objective? And how far have you gone with that? But many of us don't bother to do it. We don't bother to set objectives for ourselves. We just live our life like that as it comes. We just go. But after this discussion, I want to encourage us, if you don't have, set, a, set the objective for yourself. If it is to study, even if when you are working, see have an objective of what you want to achieve. It's very important. Apart from company, you need the objective to guide you from all that we have been told. As an individual, set objective, even when you are the boss. Not of when you are not the boss. Okay, so let's go. Goals and objectives, sometimes they are used interchangeably, but they are slightly different. You know, so that when you hear these terms are used, you think that they are exactly the same, but no. So goals are not the same as job objectives. Goals are broader, that vision, your aspiration, that is your goal. Like has been said too, you know, like I think she said it, that the objective is the plan, you know, the, the, the battle plan to get to where you are going, very important. So objective setting is key for the business, key for an individual. I'm saying represent the battle plan, the stepping stone, the roadmap on the path toward achievement of goals. So when you determine your goals, what you want to get, you must now break it down into the steps that you need to take to achieve that goal. And so objective setting is a major part of performance planning. Really, after the job description and job definition, we need to set objective. Objective is not the same thing as job description. It is very important. Many of us, we think that they are the same, but they are not the same at all. Do you know that several companies that I, that I have been started with don't have objective for their staff? When they want to appraise, they bring the job description and look at this is what I'm supposed to do. But it is wrong. They are different. There should be a job objective different from the job description. And the job objective is not job description, but job description is helpful in setting the objectives. You know, there was a garden I was, and I asked people how many people have job description. Over 60% of them who work for others don't have job descriptions. And those who work for themselves, even worse, they don't have written down plan for themselves. You know, to write down, say, okay, this is what I want to do this year. You know, that kind of commitment is not there. But we need this. Very important. Now, why should we set objective at all? Why is it important to set objective? Some of them we have said, focus on what is important or what is needed. Remember we said at the beginning that if you are doing your best, are you sure your best is what is necessary yes. to give you the desired result? That's how we started, isn't it? Yes, sir. You are doing your best, but is that your best giving you the desired result, this is the place. We have to focus on what will give you the desired result. Do you know that sometimes eh, in a company where there are no objectives, no proper performance management, people spend time on irrelevant things, things that are not driving them towards their goal, towards their desired result. They waste their time doing so many things because they have not thought about it. Things just come haphazardly and they just do. But if you have planned any cowboy you want to spend, for instance, it will be going towards achieving your objective. So focus on what is important, on what is needed. This portion of it is very critical. And it's not easy. You know, the time it takes to set proper objectives is worth it. Because the benefit eventually is enormous. It's enormous. But sometimes it's not so easy to create that time to sit down and set the objective properly. 
you know, as we shall see later, how to set proper objective. They make clear what level of performance is expected. You know, I told you a story of a, a cleaner, if I'm a restaurant business, and I want this floor to be clean all the time. Make sure, what do I expect? I expect that you clean this place every time, as frequently as possible. Really, when you go to some restaurant, you are amazed. People are still there, but they are cleaning. They are cleaning around the clock. And once you finish eating, somebody is there to carry the plate away. So as you enter, you think that, and they are cleaning the table. Now, if that is the level of performance you want, it must be agreed and discussed. It must be agreed and discussed. Make clear that there should be no ambiguity as to what you expect or what you want. They say focus effort and resources on your priorities. You know, sometimes you can do so many things, but which are the key ones? You know, there's this Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. You know, you have several things you want to do, and which are the key ones that can give you greater result quickly. You know, from experience, not everything may be necessary to give you result quickly. But there are some things you do 20% of it only. You have achieved over 50% of, of, your, of your mark. So that means that at work or as a business owner, you must begin to identify which are these core priorities that I need to do that will give me 80% or more than 50% of the result. If when you come to work in the morning, you go around to see your workers, and they are all seated all the time, they are disciplined, and you continue to do that every day, you may not be adding value to anybody. You may not be adding value. But you are wasting your time. The time you will use in thinking of some other things. But even when you go, go around, because of the nature of your job and the nature of the people, they are never on seat that your presence is necessary to bring them to line. Then maybe you are contributing. You know, I'm giving this example to know that there is no hard and fast rule about it. But to determine that among the various objectives I have, what I want to do, if I must do only one, it's going to be this. If it's going to be two, it's going to be this. Three, it's going to be this. So you list them in order of priority. And then outline specific and desirable results to be achieved within an agreed time frame. What is the effort going to yield? Why am I even doing this? Why is it necessary? What am I going to get from it? We need to state it. We need to be clear about it. That the reason for this one is this, is this, is that. So you know what is motivating you to do what you want to do. And then finally we said, hold individuals and teams accountable for performance. You know, you have to be accountable. It has to be your, your responsibility to perform. You don't need somebody to bring K like headmaster to flog you as an employee, for example, for you to do what is expected of you. And you can imagine if employees are accountable for, for their performance, there will be less stress in managing them, isn't it? There will be less stress because it means that you, you don't need to be on them every time because they are accountable. They know what is expected of them and they want to do it. Yes, now let's start with you. Are you working or are you on your own? You're on your own? Both of them. Ah, so you can answer both ways. <laughs> so can you add it? write it down? I want us to write this one down. Because these exercises are going to be cumulative eventually. We are going to refer to this one. So write it down. We'll give you two minutes, three. Write it down. Like I said, what we are writing down now, we are going to work with it again and again. So write it down well. Okay, I hope we are true. Okay, if we are, we are going to share one one for each person. Just read out one, one of your priorities. Who will start? What do you write? Business development officer. Okay, office. correct. Mm -hmm. So what is your, what do you write as your most important area of your job? Uh, referral marketing. Referral marketing. Mm -hmm. That's what you wrote. What do you write? Clients. Hmm? Clients. Pride. My clients. Your clients. Uh, okay, okay, your clients. Okay, we'll take it, but I, I need more detail than that. Yes, what do you write? I deal majorly on. 
production. Okay, it's not the accountant. Okay, you do. Okay. Okay. But the area where I, where I think we have to make a special focus on is the marketing. Marketing? Yes. Okay. Sales and marketing. Okay, your own is production, Abby. What do you have number one? Time management. Yes. That's very good. You know, I told you, you're going to work with these things we are writing. You know. It's a cumulative thing. It's not ending with this one. So let's uh, write it well. Hmm? Uh -huh. Okay, it's okay. One, just one. Yes, sir. Budget is your own. Okay, so budget is your own priority. Yes. Okay, mine is sorting out the uh, important prospects to meet. Okay, sorting prospects, yes, sorting. people. Yes. Madam? Because I'm into production, I, the first priority I ask, I've written here is a monitor of bakery management. Wow. Monitor of bakery management to assess production. That's, That's fine. Well. <laughs> yes, sir. Now is uh, employing well qualified workers for the job description. Good. You can see. Have I asked you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Nobody will be left out to. <laughs> <laughs> Why is commitment? Commitment. Yeah. Okay. Network. Network. Good. You can see we have all said different things, isn't it? Eventually, as we are going forward, we are going to develop these things we said further. So that by the time we leave here, we have proper objective around our most important focus, priority. The way we will discuss it and see how we apply it uh, when we leave here, eventually. Now, we may have heard about SMART objectives, SMART objectives that people use. But SMART is an acronym. SMART is an acronym for objective. Strategic or overall objective are broken down into various elements to achieve desired outcome. Now, how do we set objective? What we are saying is, what is the overall goal? What is the, the focus of the business? For instance, if you are in production company, if the major focus is how to increase your production, as well as the limiting factor. Limiting factor means something that is an impediment to your business. You know, in some companies, production is a limiting factor. Limiting factor because they can sell everything. But the issue they have is how to produce. In some other companies, sales is a limiting factor. They are not able to sell what they produce. You understand? But now you decide that, okay, money is production. This is the overall objective, or I want to increase profit margin. I want to satisfy the owners of the business by 20%. That may be an overall objective. Now you first of all decide that and say, strategic is nothing, the major be big word, it's nothing. Strategic don't mean you deliberately plan it, that this is what you want to do. When you have agreed a 20% profit margin increase, you want to increase production, you want to increase your business, you now break it down. What do we need to do to achieve this purpose? For instance, one of them is what he said. One of them may be, you need to employ somebody who is knowledgeable, who is that, who is that. That person is not necessarily bringing money immediately. It may be what she wants. It may be how to manage, it may be how to manage people so that they can achieve that overall objective. So you look at the overall objective and then we look at what do you want. And these are examples of the things that may be your desired outcome. It's not limited to this. But these are very popular ones that people should desire. That is, you want satisfaction of owners of the business. You want to be happy. Because if your business is not doing well, no, you won't be happy. If you are only workers, you won't be happy. So many things will make you unhappy as a business owner. Or you want satisfaction, you want delighted customers. You know, who talked about customers? Is it you or you? Customer. Yes, exactly. You want customers that will be happy. How can they be happy? When they come and they complain their price is too high, how can they be happy when they come that you didn't respond to them quickly enough? How can they be happy? How can they be happy when you deliver products that are defective? So you can see, to have an objective of delighting the customer will involve production person producing very well that the product quality is good. 
Can you, can you see the linkage? The overall objective is to delight the customer. That is what we are looking at. But instead of attacking the customer directly, we are saying that at the production level, that is the place to start. And this is how to have an objective that is, that is harmonious with the goal of the company. So you don't just look at the end result. You look at all the issues around it that will have impact, that will have bearing on what you want to get. They want motivated and efficient and effective processes. You want motivated and prepared workforce. Unfortunately today, many people don't think that there is need to provide a motivation environment for employees. They don't think it's necessary. Because there's no work, there's no this, there's no that. And so they want to motivate by fear most times. But if that is your objective, motivated and prepared workforce, do you know that if you have that as your desired outcome, it may influence the kind of selection where you want to recruit? It may influence it because, you know, we can see that all your activities is influenced by your objective, by what you want to achieve. Because if you want somebody who, who can blend with your company's culture, you will start from the point of, I like what he said, but his own is more about <laughs> recruiting the right people. And it's a good objective. It's a good objective. So you have to determine that you must get it right. Because if you get the right people, of course, they will do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. They will do the right thing. Okay. Yes. Sorry, que questions are allowed anytime for your information. Yes, ma'am. One of the major objectives is because I can say is uh, capital gain. Mm -hmm. So the capital. capital. Yes. Because if you don't have capital, you will not be able to, to do some of this. Staff, machine. machine. And if you don't have a capital, you cannot. Major thing is capital. It's capital. We will address it. Yes, sir. You okay. Don't think capital is the major thing. But we don't think it is. Don't think it is. Are you listening? Okay. I don't think. <laughs> okay. Because basically, uh, it's more of your clientele. Your clientele is the same this. I mean, if I have Kabuba, there's no capital involved. It's just a concept. And people don't have the cars. I put some capital in it. There's a way to be around everything. Like now, I, I work in real estate. Real estate? I'm not like the GM. I'm, I report to the board directly. Okay. I have department and units. When I went to the interview, they told me, this, I said, sir, I, right and there, I looked, he gave me my job description. I rewrote my job description. I said, everybody go home. I got the job. Right now, I'm not starting my own real estate firm. I don't have capital. What about what I do right now, past three, four years? I've been selling my skill. Now, I manage four other estates as my own job. I still work where I work for. And I have like four less that I'm like, the best for this quarter, quarter is 10. I'm not used capital, it's just very cool. And I now have staff, I don't know how to do that because I have objectives. I, I, I just want to divine, you have objective, yeah, yes. divine, manage, analyze, analyze, like you said, control. Basically, I, then, I know what you have to do. Let go and sleep at home, you have the objectives. I won't get this for you. That's simple as that. I have my Excel sheets. I better get to pop, 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 do it, but I don't get for the months. You can't do argue with me because it's secondly, like, secondly, online, you are seeing I'm seeing because I'm feeling you are seeing. <laughs> So yeah. nobody can say you have not performed. Can, Excellent, that that's good. Okay. That's good. Who else wants to comment? Ah, yes. As a matter of fact, eh, as a matter of fact, real estate is one of the business you can do without capital. It's one of them because uh, 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 could I just could, real estate is just linking those who have the money with those who have the property. And you can take your computer, it can be big. Many years back, I, when I was, I was working in a company, and the, the cooperative, you know, the company has a cooperative, they sold land for 1.9 billion. 1.9 billion. The commission on it was about 100 million. They didn't even do 10%. 100 million. And those who shared, it, you know what I mean by share, you know, real estate, you know, agent, sub agent. Those who shared, it, somebody that I know got 15 million. Are you getting it? He didn't have his own dime. You understand? He didn't have his own dime. But he got 15 million. And that became the beginning of success for him. Real estate is one business you can do from home, <laughs> from wherever. If you have the connection and you, you are smart too, and then you are able to just, okay, these people are selling. People have also bought land from people that the agent doesn't need to have money, isn't it? We rented this office and we gave money to those who gave us the office. They didn't have their own money. They just linked us and all that. However, However, I agree with you. You know, 
the video we were showing, it didn't come quick. We were showing a video on the seminar we had before on business basics. And in that video, we said capital is not the first thing, really. Capital is never, ever, that's why I say I agree with you. It's never, ever the first thing. Before you think of capital, you think of how is the business going to satisfy customers first. You know, the issue you have is different. Different is that you're already in production and you have some challenges and you need to increase your production, you need to increase your performance. But luckily, to even your own kind of business, you are lucky sometimes you can get people to pay for product even before you produce it. When it comes to the issue of getting capital to increase your volume, your business, the thing to look at is your documentation, your record keeping, your accounting. How do you convince him that he should put money in the business? You understand? So if you have a business and then you want more money, then there must be proper document, proper record to show that this business is profitable. And if you put more money like this, it will explode. And that you can pay the money back. So for somebody looking for capital, it's different. It's, it's the business documentation, the accounting, and how you keep your records. Keeping separate business records so that somebody will see that this business is doing well. You know it's a struggle for people to have separate accounts, mostly for small, small people. People, are, people may be having a maybe provision store. They are selling so much, but they have a business account. They don't even have. They don't have, not that they are not using it. They have not opened an account for the business, but they are in business. And so when you say you want money for that business, nothing to show. Nobody will give you money. Nothing to show. So for a business that wants to grow, you must develop some habits. One of them is to keep business, have a business account and separate your business from your personal expenses. Now when we are looking at it, it's easy to know how well the business is doing. But capital always is not the first thing. We preach it, that's what we believe. That if you have a good business plan like him, you have a very solid business to do, you will find money. You will find money. That way you can find loan here and there when you don't have money. Okay, so we have said these are some of the desired outcomes, but it can be more. And you can see the linkage between them and your overall outcome. You want customer satisfaction, but you are going down to the cleaner, you are going down to the factory person. You understand? That if he doesn't do our cookies very well, if he does, if he's not hygienic in preparing it, then we have a problem with the customer, isn't it? Yes. So you can see. So you are looking at the top, your customer, we are looking at the bottom. Who is the cleaner? Who is the one doing some little things at the bottom? So they all tie together, you know, to make it work. You know, I said SMART is actually an acronym for all this, an acronym. They represent uh, specific, measurable, agreed, realistic time bound. So these are the things that you look at when you are setting objectives. If your objective setting does not meet these ones, then there is something wrong with it. Specific, you can you know it. Some of the things we have said, that's why I said we should take note of what we're writing down. We are going to convert them to smart objective. So to, to make it specific. Specific means that when you say it, or when somebody reads it, he understands what they are talking about. It's not vague. It's not subject to different interpretation. Specific. So you can begin to look at what you have written down now and see how you can make them specific. And then measurable, how do we know? How do we know that thing is done? Measurable and then agreed. You already agreed with an employee. Not that the employee dictates it, you discuss it and then agree. In the process of discussion, it's probable to say you need some resources and all that and all that. And all that will be agreed also. They're realistic, you know, to be achievable. But it should not be too easy. You know, they say if you aim at the sky, you may not get the sky, but you shoot so high, much higher than where you think of, isn't it? It should be realistic. It's not just something so simple. When you ask employees to set their own objective, they want to put something that they can easily achieve, achieve so that you say that you are perform. No. It must be stretching. It must be something that will uh, stretch you and then the time frame. If you don't put a time frame, then you don't know what you're talking about. Now, this is what they mean. Specific, precise terms, measurable. How do you measure? Is it a rate? Is it a number? If you say your, your objective is to 
the like cost? How do you measure it? How do you know they are happy? How? If it's to increase production, how? Is it quantity produced? Is it rates? Is it number of hours using producing the same quantity? Do you know that if you enter production and you spend four hours to produce a particular quantity, if you now spend three hours, that same quantity, same quality, you may have improved, isn't it? Yeah. Even though you have not increased the quantity. So you need to determine how are you going to measure it. Very important. How? How will you measure it? Agreed. And then realistic, ambitious, but achievable. And then time bound. This, this is what makes objective smart. All these ones. Here is another exercise. These are vague objectives. How do we make them smart? How do we do attempt to make them smart? Who will start? By making it measurable. Yeah, no, just say it. You have to say it. You have to, if I want to increase sales, okay. how do you make it measurable? So okay. say it. I want to increase sales. Vague objectives. Smart objectives. I want to increase sales by 15% within the next three days. Three days. 15% three days. That's fair. Yes? Hello? Next one. I want to spend less time watching TV. I want to spend less time watching TV. So I'll spend, I watch TV every one hour in a day, 7 to 8 p.m. or after the day, or after the same set of objects for the day. Okay, you want to watch TV one hour every day? One hour every day. Now, you say you want to spend less time. How, how, how do we know that one hour every day is not more? No, I said after achieving objects, 70% of the objects for the mm. day. You spend one hour. Well, no, what I'm saying is this. No, what I'm saying is this. Maybe you have been spending less than that one hour before. But now you want to spend less. I just want to spend one hour. How am I sure that the one hour is not really less? If you are my employee and I ask you to set this objective, and you are telling me the one that you can easily achieve. Yeah, for me, I'm, I'm, to be among my team, for the But you, you have the idea. The idea is really to be, to be specific. You have the idea. Yes, who will try the next, next one? Volunteer at this time. I want to be more approachable at work. Who doesn't want to be approachable at work, Genevieve? Anybody? No. There's nobody. Okay, nobody, have you? Okay, so is this clear enough? Can we measure it? Yes. How do we measure it? How do you measure that you have employed more EQ skills? Listen, how do I measure that you are listening more? What is the evidence? More we are going to get spend more time with people. Spend more time with people. You are getting it. Spend more time with people. That is it. You just got it now. So can we add that? Spend more time with people and start to get a feedback. Good. Okay. Correct. Yes, correct. I want to prepare my Monday report regularly. This is a very common one, isn't it? But is this specific enough? How do we make it more specific? How do we put the time for like what? Who? Of the following month, um, or, or, or every, second. every second of the month. That's the one you want, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, sometimes in a training seminar like this, uh, people say something that also represents what, they what their heart is, and I agree with that. Really, good companies, M plus five max, you should have the reports of the previous month. M plus two, M plus five. Even bigger the, the use system. You know, 40 days is, is you're already in another month. <laughs> M plus two, I, I'll hold it to you too. M plus two. I want to spend more time with my family. If I come to you that this is my objective for this year, I want to spend more time with my family. Is it big? Is it? How do I make it clearer, more specific? Specific. Every Saturday. That's correct. That's good. That would be a huge one. Four <laughs> times a month. <laughs> Even if it's every month, it's still okay. What we're asking is that let it be specific. Let us know what you want to do. Really, we are laughing about these things, but work objective is like that. You understand? It has to be objective. It has to be specific so that we can control it. These are some suggested solutions. Suggested ones, so what we have just said. I want to increase monthly sales by at least 5%. I don't want to watch TV more than six hours a week. 
I want to initiate conversation with at least five people in a week. You no, know, I have to speak with more people. I want to prepare my Monday report not later than fifth or the following month. I want to spend at least 30 minutes every day with my children. If you give yourself this objective, I want to spend 30 minutes with my family every day. Do you know that you can monitor it? If yesterday you did not do it, today you will know that you didn't do it. And if it's a commitment and not just a wish, not just interest, you find that it's 7 p.m. You have not spent the 30 minutes. And it's 7 p.m. What will you do? You quickly organize. <laughs> but the fact that it's a commitment, it's an objective, it will prompt you to want to do something. But do you know that we need this kind of for in many homes? This is very well. We need it in many homes. Many families don't have time for their children. What we have written earlier, yes, we are going to convert it into smart objectives in our notes. So we have we're up to five minutes for this because I know sometimes it's not as easy. So you are going to write out what you have written before. Those are your three priority lists we said. Deal with only one of them. We're never asking you to do for everything. Deal with only one of them and make it smart. Specific, measurable, and all the things I've talked about smart. Are we true? Just the following one, instead of three. Yeah, read it. Read your own. I tell you what, I wanted to review and produce appraisal based on milestones achieved over, over achieved. That is your objective. objective. Okay, so to make it specific. Well, I'm trying to measure their scope. Week daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Is that, is that achievable too? Daily? Yes. And some things that you cannot do in a week, you have to gradually. No, it's fine. I just want to be sure that because once you set yourself up to say you want to do daily or you want to do weekly, you understand? You need to be accountable to that and be sure you are really doing it daily. So if you are not sure it can be daily, for this exercise, it's not just for exercise sake. It will be something that is real. You know what I'm saying? Are you sure it's realistic? Okay, that's fine. Who else will give us? You want to give us? Budget and expense. Okay, that's what you wrote before. Okay, so how do you make it specific? I need to source out for the alternative resources with the lowest cost of input to achieve more output. Uh, it's still not very clear. Lowest cost means what? Lowest cost can be 20 million, can be 50 million, have yeah, And it can be 2 naira. Now, I'm spending more before and I'm achieving the specific results. I'm trying to make sure that I look for something less and the specific amount I'm spending before to achieve even more than what I'm producing out. Okay. If I hear you, is that you want to spend maybe 10% less, less than what you were spending before. Oh. Eh, that's specific. When you say that, if you look at what you were spending before as 100, and if you don't spend 90, then you have not performed, isn't not it? Perform. You want to spend less, but you must put a figure so that it is specific so that we can hold you accountable for it. So if, we have, if you, you like budget, if we have listed how much you spent last year, last month, last week, and it's 100, 200, you want to spend less by 10%, it's your commitment. So it means that if it is to purchase, you need that you have to do more research, more quotation and all that. You want to spend less, so we can hold you accountable for it. So when we prepare the report of your expenses for the following month, if it is done less, then you have not performed. And that's what we say. With proper performance management, no employee should complain that he or she has been unfairly uh, uh, appraised. It shouldn't be. You know, you gave that example earlier from what we have said now. It's specific, so we know it. You understand? Yes, sir. As I tell existing customers, should refer at least five customers daily. Daily? Daily, yes, after engagement. Yes. So Is that realistic? Very realistic. Are you sure? Not that you should get in touch with 10. If you ask me that, I will get in touch with 20, 20 potential customers every day. I don't have more problem with that. You will get in touch, Abby. But that they will refer. It means that you will talk to, for 10 to refer, you may have talked to 100. Yes, yes. Which is realistic. No, we'll talk to 10 existing customers. Uh -huh, they reframe it. I will talk to 10 existing customers daily. Not that they will refer. If you say they will refer, it may be specific but it's not realistic in the business world today isn't it yes. 
Uh -huh. So if you give yourself, I will talk to 10 potential customers every day. For me, it's a good objective. But that means that I have to find, we'll get there. We are just dealing with being specific. We are going to deal with smartness of the objectives later. But we'll get there. So that at the end of the week, I should be able to see how many customers you talk to. 10 times 5, 50 will be Monday to Friday. So if I've not seen it, then you have not performed. That's what it means, so. So anything you put as your objective, you have to be accountable for it. Yes, what did you do, store? Time management. Time, okay, that was your issue. Okay, so what did you do? all items that we used over the weekend must be washed or cleaned before 3 p.m. every Monday. 3 p.m. every Monday. Is that realistic? You don't think it's realistic? Genevieve, no, they work together. Okay. Yeah, they also, they know what he's talking about. <laughs> Genevieve, is it realistic? It's not. Monica, is it realistic? After today. <laughs> but you see what the comment they are making, they are your colleagues. <laughs> if they are your colleagues, and from what is happening, obviously, they are not seeing this thing like that. And they are wondering how you will do it. <laughs> it's not about him. Uh, Leaving him, he might achieve, achieve it. it. But you see, those working with him, are they, would they do it? No, it's his responsibility now. Uh, those working with him, that's not an issue. It's him that have the objective. How he gets going to do it is his own business, isn't it? No, but the issue is that good, you know, like I said, part of the take home later, we have what we call take home assignment. Take home is one of it. You are going to really do all these things that you apply in your place of work. If it is unrealistic, you look at what is really realistic. Because if you set an unrealistic target, you cannot achieve it. And it can be discouraging. You understand? But it must be realistic. Jennifer, what did you write? My smart objective there is I will make sure I run a background check and visit 10 prospective clients every week to discuss business. Uh, so you cannot increase to 30 for the class. For the class. <laughs> you want to say something? <laughs> so that it's easy, that nobody will say it's unrealistic. Yes. Okay, all right. So, Monica, what's your own? What do you write initially? You know, we said that we are going to be uh, commitment. So, if you cannot do commitment specifically, you have to do something. Okay, one other thing we need to also note eh? objective is an annual thing. You understand? It's not once for all, it's an annual something. You set objective every year. You may repeat some of them. For instance, if what she said is true, and she has been that already, that may not be an objective again. Because it's not stretching. We said objective is a commitment. It's not a wish. It's not what you're interested in. It's what you're devoted to doing. And you accept excuses. That's what objective is. So they are saying that it's not realistic. This is your five knockdown. So what would be the, it's not realistic? It's not realistic. It's not realistic. Okay, let me, yes, I can't control their process. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Let's just say one. In a week? That's two. One per day says it's realistic. That's 25 in a month, 20 in a month. You know what that means, eh? It means at the end of the month, you cannot register 25, 20 bookings for the four weeks. She has not performed up to expectation. That's what it means. You know, do you know what it means to really have this thing properly written and the way we have said it? And the month ends. And I say, bring all the bookings. And you bring 15. And you say 20. I say, ah, you have not performed 100%. Too. And I mark you down at 75% uh, for on that objective, which I'll see later. And then another month, another month, another month. At the end of the year, we bring all of them down. And you see that you have not performed. When I mark you down in your appraisal, will there be a problem? Because you know and I know, isn't it? This is the level we want everybody to get to. This is the level. What do you write, sir? I just got specific. To write out required qualification for marketing staff before employment. Okay, before and employment. employment. And ensure sticking to this standard as in service. They for example, graduate in marketing with Okay, it's fair. Since it's before employment. So if I come to your, your company and I see a young man, a young lady working, I say it was employed yesterday, I say, where's your job description? He say, I have not been given. Me, you have not performed. Sure. That's what it means. Yes. It means at any point in time, anybody that is working your company will have job description. So it's a commitment. So that's it's good. I, I'm happy with the discussion so far. The next is to apply these discussions, you know, when we get back. The application.
you know that it will matter. So that, you know it's easier when you have this, and somebody is busy, anybody is checking. It's easy to know how well you are doing. You just get what you wrote and what you did. It's so easy. Even for your own self. This is what I gave myself. This is what I have done. And this is a gap. And you know, because it's a commitment, like we said, you know, you, 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 you'll be motivated to want to do something. That smart object, that specific. You know, the aim is that it should be majorable. The exercise we did was on how to make it specific. Let us know it. So let, us, let everybody know what we are talking about. So that when we are assessing it, we are on the same page. If your commitment becoming too difficult to major, then reframe it. Do you understand? Because if you set objectives that you cannot major, you cannot manage it. You cannot manage it. Which I were insisting on saying it must be specific. If you can't measure it, then you cannot manage it. So all our objectives must be measurable, no matter what it is. No matter the kind of work, whether it is production, whether it is accounts, whether it is marketing, business development, or whatever. It has to be measured to be managed. That you have say so what gets measured to be relevant and aligned with the organization's objective. It's not just to major, is it what you want? Is it your desired outcome? You must major something that will lead you to what you want. Like what she said, me, I want to have more money. I want to say so go. I want a lot of clients. And she said she can do one a day. Every Monday, I want to see five. <laughs> you understand? That was done the previous week. And the fact that she knows, and I know, that I'm going to ask her, if by Thursday, she has not done one of the things she said she would do. Well, she, she will make effort, isn't it? She will make effort to try to perform. And in the process, things will be better for the business. This is key performance indicators, evidence of your performance, evidence to show that you have performed. We say KPIs are measures put in place after the objectives have been agreed to determine evidence of performance. How do you know what we mentioned percentage? You want to increase your profit by 10%. Do you know that kind of measurement, percentage? You need to know the base, isn't it? You need to know what it was before. If you say you want to increase your profit by 10%, what was the profit before? The other side, if it was 1,000, so you want to increase by 100. But it can also be physical, it can be money value. I want to increase my profit by 2 million. That doesn't need a base, seriously. You just know how much you made before. I want to have 2 million this year. There must be, it can be ratio. The ratio of defective product to good production. The when you produce, how many do you get from one bag? Can you reduce the rate of rejection? Can you reduce the rate of, uh, what do you call it? The bad ones that come out of it. <laughs> you sort it out. Can you reduce the ratio? So there are so many things that you can use. The frequency, you know, or the number. Things that you can use to measure your performance. Very important. Examples of key performance indicators, key performance indicators. Increase weekday revenue from use of halls. How do I know percentage increase over previous period? You understand? But I say increase weekday revenue by maybe 10%. I will need to know the previous revenue, isn't it? That's like getting one customer every, every day, or every week, every day. You may speak to 50. If no one has then you have not. And so we are saying that the number of customers can be uh, what you used to measure. Number of new customers that you acquired. Where's our accountant? Prepare week, uh, analysis of income and expenses weekly. If that's your target, your objective, there must be a report to show that you have prepared it. The other side, key performance indicators. We just run through others. We'll send this report. Quality recruitment, my <laughs> Quality recruitment, for instance, say you want to new hire performance, probation success ratio report. If you want to, you are interested in the quality of people that you recruit. When you have recruited them, in the next six months, how many of them succeed? How many of them don't perform? You know, there's a probation every three months, six months. If at the end of the period, at the end of, of one year, two years, you see that all people you recruit, they are not successful at probation, it means that there's something wrong with the quality of the people you are bringing in, isn't it? Because if they are good quality as you propose in your heart, then they should work and be successful 
and be confirmed as staff. Say, okay, follow up inquiries for others. We want to do more. Inquiries log updated regularly. All we are struggling to achieve here is what is the evidence that you have performed? What is evidence? Monitor customers' feedback. You must get something to use to know what you are monitoring. Buy product at competitive prices. You want to buy your beans. You want to be sure that you are not cheated. You want to be sure that you get quotation. You talk to more people. You don't just buy from the first person. You know, long ago, when I go to the market to buy something that I don't know about, I will not buy from the first shop, no matter how low yeah. the price is, because I don't know about it. So they may give me at maybe 100 naira. It may be low, I won't buy, I will just refuse. I want to go and try other places first. Yeah. And so I will tell them, like, if I can't get it cheaper, I will come back. And truly, I do at times. But then I get it cheaper at times. But then I go to two, three places and find that that 100 naira is on the high side. Maybe it's even 80. And say quality. Same thing with business. You want to buy at more competitive prices. Same thing with uh, any business. Even people who are maintaining your vehicles. Anything. You want to try other people. Ask them. Do quotation. Do research first. Because you want to buy at more competitive prices. So there has to be that commitment to do that. New product development. You want to have new product. You want to develop a new product for Royal Oaks or for Lakisi or for everybody for that matter. How will you know? How will you know? We say number of new products or percentage of sales. You know, this is a, so once you put as objective, we must tie it with the KPI. Evidence of performance. Key performance indicators. So that when we are not seeing that evidence, then it means that you have not performed. Revenue increase, percentage of growth, and other. Reduction in amount and age of debtors balances. People have debtors. Age analysis. Age analysis. Because sometimes somebody is owing you. You don't know how old the debt is. You know, people who don't understand much, they value the, the, the amount and not the age. Somebody is owing you 3,000. Say it's only 3,000. But you have been owing for two years, for six months, for four months. But I owe you 10,000. I say, ah, this one is big. But that's only for two weeks ago, for one month. You can see. Well, at the age is also very important. The age of the dead. So if you do age analysis, you will see that, though this money may not be so big, but you have been owing for a long time. And if you borrowed money to do that business, it has become a loss. So it's important to do some of these things. Yes, we continue from where we stop. Read it, read it, read it. Exercise four. Write key performance indicators for the objective you wrote down in exercise two. Yes. Now, how do we know? Let's get back to our note now. Key performance indicator. You know, we just discussed it. I want to know. Now, how do we know? What is it? How do, how do I know that you have performed? What would be the evidence? To show what? To show the number, like the call of that shows the number of customers stopped to well, as against customers who failed. Okay, that's fine. Yes, sir. Okay, I have a PCM in what actionable of what you do daily with them. They go on inspection and I just. Office, See you get it. And, and they can now put them in percentages. Okay, now me. What is your KPI? Do you know, when you are looking at this KPI, if your object is not very specific, you have a problem, isn't it? You have a problem. But if it is not measurable, it is not fulfilling the smartness that we are talking about. It may be specific, but it's not measurable. That's still not okay. It has to be more than one. Yes. Okay. Um, How do we know that? Case, you, hmm. It's when the clients have booked. And they have, they have paid? Yes. If they have not paid? I have details of... Um, I have details of um, their, their booking. Their booking. So what, if, if I'm your boss, and you have said this is your objective, you want to acquire one customer every day, yes. and I visit in two weeks, mm -hmm. how, what will you give me to show how many customers you have acquired? What will I see? They are, they are paying. 
How will I see their payment? I'm going to go to the bank or go to the fire, begin to look at their payment one by one. Is there a report? Yes. Is there something that shows weekly, monthly, to say this is the number of customers yes, that and how much? I have something that shows um, daily what's okay. who and who has bought. Okay. So when yes. we leave here now, if you truly make an objective for yourself, maybe not one one, maybe two two. <laughs> 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 so, so if I come around, I can ask for a report yes. to show it. Yes. Okay. That okay, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. The daily report by the fourth year from the supervising personnel showing details of item maintained. Every you were the one that said 3 p.m. and yes. they were not so convinced that it's realistic. Yes. You are moving to public to prepare the report. Uh, so the within one hour, within three hours. That's it. Once the job is done by three, yes. in that one hour, the report is ready. It should be ready by four. Why are you laughing at me? Me, I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> okay. Generally, we laugh at too. Yeah. Yes. It depends. I don't know your business. It depends. But, yes. but it has to be realistic. It's what we are saying here, when we live here, when we live here, you should do some of these things in practice Definitely. and should be realistic. Definitely. And your colleagues are here. They are hearing you too. Of course not. <laughs> there's a shake in the department. Oh, there's a shake in the department. Yes. So this thing is possible. Very possible. Okay, all right. That's fine. <laughs> Generally. I will Okay, that's good. And they should book too, because that is evidence I'm that I'm you are speaking. No, but our objective is not book. Our objective is that they will speak to them. No, our own objective. No, that's what we are considering. What we are considering is an example of one objective. You can have five objectives. You understand? There can be another objective of Susan Ramos' book. This one is that you speak. You know, you can have a series of objectives for one target. You want to sell 20 or whatever in a week. In the process, you want to talk to 50 people. That's one objective. We are hoping out of that 55, for instance, will book. Other than all will be tied together. But the one we are looking at is the one where she said she will talk to people. So if that is the objective, I want to see evidence that she talked to people. You understand? But I understand your booking. <laughs> <laughs> if I come now to the, to the factory on a Friday, and I want to see what you have done for the previous four days, how would I know that you have produced eight bags? Okay, how? They, brought, they normally brought the two bag of beans yes. outside. Then you produce it. When you produce it, that one bag gives you at least five. When you, they have a well, like, measuring them, mm. they give you five bags. Mm. That is one bag gives you five, five. bags. Yes. So how will I know? How will it be? I will see it every day. I'm coming on, on Friday. A report, okay, that shows production report. Okay, so today is uh, what's today's day now? Yeah. So if we go back to the factory, are we going to see report of production in the last from the beginning of the month to date? Yes, that's good, that's excellent. Please keep it up. We really try to see how we can avoid a boss telling the staff that he or she is not working and the staff contesting it, which is what happens in many places. The staff will contest it that, oh, how can I say I'm not working? I went to, to make a presentation on performance management for a company, a very big company. And come and see, and there were so many, about 100 of them. That was the issue. There is always argument whether you have performed or you have not performed. And one of them says some managers are terrible. That no matter how well you do, they can never rate you well. They will always rate you badly. And when I said that, with proper performance management, even if a manager does not like you, he cannot rate you badly. Is it correct? Is it true? That with proper performance management, even if your manager hates you, he cannot mark you badly that you have not performed. Do you agree, Naomi? Yes, sir. Do you agree, Monica? Does it follow, therefore, that if you have proper performance management in your company and you are not doing well, your boss says you're not doing well, it's your fault. Yes, yes. Abby? So we are getting near. Instead of blaming our bosses, mm. we should blame ourselves. Yes. Abby? For not, For not performing. But to get to that level, let us ensure we have a proper objective that is agreed. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. For the performance, uh, 
objectives. In other words, the staff who have been given the, the objective. objectives. Yes, agreed. So, Majorable. So, but. who is deriving the objective? Is okay, good question. Is this staff? Or staff. Good. Because we start by saying we should give the job description. Before you start. Before you play me, that's what he said. So, who is agreed that as, as management, I should have my objectives? Your own, and then plus own for your staff. For yes. So, if I employ a staff, you see me that we still derive the objective, or the staff will derive the objective, or the two of us. Collaboratively, you do it together. You do it together. But for a new staff, who doesn't know much about your business? You cannot expect it to do much about deriving its own objectives. But for an old staff, an existing company, but you have not been having performance management, if you want to introduce it, the staff and you can sit down and derive the objective. For a new staff who is just coming in, it is the management that will derive the objective and discuss it so that it can be agreed. That's very important. It, that is, it must be accepted. In the process of the discussion, the staff may raise issues why what you're asking him or her to do will not be possible. It's not achievable. Then you dialogue. So for me to achieve this that you want to achieve, I need a car. And you discuss, okay, but the company cannot afford the car yet. Meanwhile, I'll give you transport money. So you have to say, okay, I will take transport money. When this way, I'll get a car. You have negotiated and you have agreed. That's how it goes. So once you have agreed, then the staff runs with it. Even job description, if you have no job description before, and you're already working for some years, some time, two of you can come together to write it, to let the worker, employee write out all that he does, and you look at it, and you amend it, and you agree it. So objective will be done by the management in collaboration with the staff, so that the staff can own it. The staff will not say it is imposed, in fact, in that company I told you about, they said they imposed the objective for them. And that's why it is always, <laughs> it's not working. If, you, if I say you should sell 200 units, when you know it's, not, it's impossible, the main fact that it's unrealistic can be discouraging. So that's why you must carry the staff along in setting the objective. Once objective is set and it's not the way we are saying, then leave the rest for the employee to perform. And if he's not performing, he will know or she will know. And because everybody would like to perform, you understand? You want to do something. It reduces the stress in managing people. Well, yes. You know and I know. And if you didn't do it, I know you didn't do it. You know I didn't, you didn't do it. It reduces stress seriously. It's something that we want to really uh, advocate this afternoon. OK, now the process. We, you know, I told you we are spending so much time on objective. However, we have talked about the benefit and the difference. But this is the real main part of the whole seminar. Thereafter, we'll do other things, but we need to get this one right. This is an area where people don't get it right. You'll be surprised if I call some names of big companies that, that, I, uh, that I, I facilitate all these things for, that don't have proper objectives. If I mention their names, you won't believe. Big companies that are known, they don't have. And when you talk to the workers, they want it. Every employee seems to want as well where he can determine whether he's working well or not, instead of leaving that one in the hands of his boss. Which employee will not like that? That as I'm working, I'm the one who will determine whether I'm working well or not. And if I'm working well, I will know. My boss cannot say I'm not working well. Who would not want to be in that position? Everybody. But the discipline to go through this objective setting is not as easy as I'm saying it. You can see the challenge in doing just one. Yeah. If it was a proper training session that we have for HR, this is like uh, Louis said, this is just performance management. We have a two day training for HR. We call it people's side of business, talking about recruitment. This one is just one, one topic among the issues that we, that we look at. That one, we are going to look, look at for three or five objectives. You set it, we'll look at it together. It's not as about commitment. Once you are committed, it's easy. I would say this is a process of setting smart objectives. First of all, determine what the business wants to achieve. 
You start from there, start from the customer, start from there. And then identify three to five priority areas, which we have identified. Now, what we have done, because we are doing this seminar setting, may not be the best. When we think about it again, you understand? We may review it, isn't it? And know that ah, these are not really the most important things. But the key thing is that you know the overall goal and you identify the three important ones you want to deal with. And then we translate business into coordinated, functional, and individual smart objectives. A company will have two, three more staff. They cannot be working across purpose. So it must be coordinated. I just told you somebody wants to sell so much and she's in production. And the, the objective for the production person is to be sure that the quality that is coming out is good. That's a norm for that person. He doesn't need to know how many people buy. He doesn't need to call people to come and buy. Isn't it? That's all he needs to do. Somebody else will be the one to call people to come and buy. But all of them is aimed at the overall objective. That's it, it must be coordinated you know, by everybody. And then we said, understand what needs to be done. Not just that, why it should be done. If you want me to call 20 customers every month, why should I call 20 customers? Sometimes somebody may even say, I called 20 and nobody responded, so I will not call again. <laughs> you understand? But you need to understand that, look, oh, that's how business is. You may call 20 and nobody will respond. The next 22 may respond. So why are you doing it? You are doing it because eventually some people will respond. And that it's not easy to call 20 and expect all 20 to say yes. You don't know what to do and why are you doing it? They agree appropriate performance measurement criteria. Notice the last one before we left. How will I know that you have performed? This one is very critical because if everybody knows both employers, I mean, how to perform, how to, evidence of performance, there will be little argument when you are not performing, isn't it? There will be little argument. So as we live here today, we are going to, if we have objective already, we'll revise it. If we don't have, we're going to set them and see how it helps us to manage uh, our businesses. We may, not, we may not do this because we have talked so much about it because of our time. What I will say to what we have done is measurement and specific. But now we say smart. The next thing to add to it is the, is the time bound. It will say within a specific period of time. Now let's look at this. Increase sales by 30%. Increase sales by 30%. And we look at the action. Now, sometimes people will put the objective on top. You understand? There are different ways of the table. There's only one specific way. But this, is, this sample, say increase sales by 30%. You have actions to task. What are you doing? You say understand what needs to be done, isn't it? And why you are doing it. And then it said, wait, the WT is weight. How heavy, what weight? Are you attaching to this task? You understand? The KPI is what we just discussed. Key performance indicator. What is the evidence? How will anybody have performed? And then when? When? The last thing for resources and materials that you may need. You need a car, you need a bicycle. Because of coronavirus, you don't need a car. You want to be on your own. <laughs> you need a bicycle this time. <laughs> so that your body will not tell anybody. You know, what resource do you need? Now look at what we have just done. Say, understand product challenges and competitive advantage. You just employed a young person to sell cookies, or to sell car chips, or to sell a event, the hall, or whatever. Who is new? And you give him this kind of objective. And you say the first point is to understand. And you are giving a weight of five. Say, selling plans suitable for this, for okay, for the situation, for the circumstances. And you are giving one month. What are you telling that guy? In the next one month, study the business, isn't it? Yes. Understand the business and come up with a plan. You understand? This first point is not leading to sales yet, isn't it? Yes. But, but why is he doing it? Why does he need to understand the business and build, and build up a plan? Because it will help eventually. Because you cannot start in vacuum, isn't it? So he spends the one month understanding the business, making all the queries, and he comes up with a plan to sell. He has not sold. You know, I said, I mean, that, look, performance like, you have to be patient and endure for the results to come. It's as well as going to farm. You know, you don't have it the day you plant. Those of us who are farmers, we understand this. You understand? Yes. 
So he, he presents that report, and you analyze the report. You review the report with him or her. And you look at areas that are not OK that you want to do. Like my brother, who is into real estate. I'm new in real estate. I don't know anything about real estate. And I go to him. He what? I need to understand the business. Maybe if you go around buildings that are not completed, you want to find out who are the owners, who are the agents, in order to have access so that they can enable me to manage them. They, every business has its own peculiarities. So you must study that. OK, list target customers and reach out to them for patronage. Now, what kind of customers are yours? What is their demography? How old are they? Where do they live? How do you reach them? Do you know that the nature of your customer will determine how you reach them? If your product is cookies, for instance, for young people, you must find a way to reach them, maybe through social media. Because that is where they are. You understand? Yes. That is where they are. You have to meet them where they are. You, you get the point. So the nature of your product will determine where you meet them. Say, now, what is the KPI? List of target customers stroke reach out evidence. Just a list. You know what I mean? It's easy to know. List, what is the list of the people you targeted? Today, when you ask people to go and market, they won't prepare that list first. They, they just parabolate. You understand? Just look. Not focused. If you look at your target customers, in, on this street, you have about five supermarkets. That is my target for this street, for that, for that, or this place and this place. And when I set up in the morning, I have a focus. I have what I want to do, isn't it? I have a list I want to work with. And I follow it through. You understand? I'm saying, okay, visit or call five existing customers daily to solicit more sales. Because to increase sales does not necessarily mean new customers only. Isn't it? You can increase sales to existing customers. Who says that those who are already buying from you may not even buy another of your product? Somebody is buying cookies from us. Can he also buy cake? Yes. Somebody is buying cake from us. Can he also buy cookies? So you begin to explore the possibility of more business to the same customer. Somebody who came to do event in the hall, will he also have party items? Will he have party outside the hall? You understand? So you begin to look at that. And then we say contact details of customers called and visited as the evidence. Contact they will include the name of the customer, the phone number, whatever. If you're asking for this thing from an employee, can he, can he misbehave? No. Can he pretend not to work and say he's working? No. Cannot. And this is the issue. This is what performance management does. You cannot pretend to be working where you're not working. Because we'll be looking for the evidence. And even the person himself, knowing that he needs evidence of those he has called, he will make the effort. And in the process, he will get results, which is what we want. He will get results. And we'll say, okay, visit five. You know the first one is existing customers. Yeah. Visit five potential new customers weekly. And you can see you are putting Mondays, Mondays. So every Monday, are you getting it? We want to see what we have done the previous week. So we are not waiting for the end of the month. And that's one of the attributes of performance management. You don't wait at the end of the period to ask questions. You are asking questions to correct, not to punish, not to find out that the man has not been working. You want to make sure you don't promote the person. No. You want to correct as the work is going on. So every Monday, you show evidence. And then finally, say product invoice and cash collection. Because if you sell and you have not collected cash, maybe you have not sold. You know, elementary, those they say, Sales without collection is, is no sales. And you can see if you add up all these points, they come to 30. Now, this guy may have four other objectives. You understand? But this one of it is 30. So if he has 100% here, he has only scored 30% of his objective for that month. Are you getting it? There will be other objectives and maybe other marketing. At the end of the day, you can add up how he has performed. Is it 40%? Is it 30%? So you can imagine, so you can score the person on each line. And this is marketing. It applies to almost every business. Weight. What is the weight? How important is it? I know it is often said that mostly for small businesses, the business owner is a marketer, no matter his profession. Whoever he is. Even if you don't anything, you have to market your services, market your product. 
Because without sales, there's no business. This is a sample of a smart objective. You can see how detailed it is. This is just one objective. Are you getting it? Now, you have gone to the extent of detailing how the work will be done and why it should be done. So that even somebody who is not so conversant, taking this objective and running with it, may come up with results. Any question? I like questions at this point because this is key. The ability to set the objective in a similar manner or whatever it is will be very helpful. You are, if you are giving this to a staff that you employ to do marketing and you follow up Monday and you will know when the person is not performing. There will be a Monday when he cannot produce a list of people that he has contacted, isn't it? Yeah. And he knowing that you, are, you will know, he will make effort to do. And in the process, you will get results. So for us in HRO, Performance management is key to productivity, to everything. And that if you do it well, less hassle in monitoring staff. And most importantly, the fact that they know that they have not performed will, pu will push them to perform. And will not be blaming you that uh, you cannot see what they are doing. What do you mean that N plus 5? N plus 5, month. Month N plus 5. Five days after the end of the month. After the end of the month. N plus 5. Uh, product okay. invoice and cash collection. Product sold at cash. So we will give you a report at uh, five days at the end of the month. This is what I have sold. Okay. And this is uh, so you see it. Okay. You, the M collect, plus five. The sales and collection. Season. Because you don't carry sales. You may have to, you may, you may be forced to sell on credit. But the thing is that it should be collected. Let the person know that if you sell on credit, until the cash is collected, you have not really sold. Well, I want to that okay. If my objective is to increase sales by 30%. 30 what do I need to do? That is action and task. Yes, it? yes. So, all of that, I need to understand the products, the challenges, yes. and the competitive advantage of that product. Pro and that may involve research, questions, so many things, isn't it? Yes. So, increase sales of that product. Mm. Then, who are my target customers? Yes. How do I, when do I proceed? How often the products, invoice, and cash collection, all those are to all of them. All of them are to towards that objective. Sales. Right. So performance objective, KPI. Evidence okay. of evidence. How will I know? Mm. Now, other, other when? when now, so the time period. Yeah, one more to do that because we are new. <laughs> Two weeks. Mondays, M plus five. Any other question on this? Because today we have to do this in right table for us when we get back. Yes, Naomi, are you hearing us? Yes, sir. We have to do it right like this. Now, it takes time to do it for every objective. This will not be the only objective of the marketer. This is 30 percent, we say, isn't it? So the other objectives that we need to talk about. Okay, we say setting objective or target is just the beginning of a good staff performance management system. It's just the beginning. Objectives alone will not deliver results. Let's also get it clear. Do you understand? It's not because you have set objectives the way we have described it, then you go to sleep. No. No. Action plan is required after setting the objectives. I would say the action plan includes steps to be taken and when. We said you need to understand the product. It needs to do research. When will it start? What will it do? Is it going to do research through Google? Is it going to visit some places? Do you understand? Because the object is just a summary. But you need to take steps. For you to understand the product, is it going to visit supermarket? What will it do? All that must be done. The consultation that must be made and approval required. Can it just get up and say it's going to visit? Does it not need approval? Does it not need a car or transport money? All those things that will be there, they will be part of it. And okay, resources, okay, resources needed, people, time, and equipment. So you don't set objective and go to sleep. You follow it up with an uh, action plan. Yes. We are going to pause. We are pausing here because all what we have done since is objective setting. But what is the performance management process itself? This objective setting is one of them. It's just the description we have done mentioned before. Is one of them. But the other things, 
that make it complete. These are not the only things. This is the performance management circle. If you look at the circle, you have performance management in the, in the middle. And you have uh, reviewing. Review is like appraiser. Review what the person has done. But we start with planning. All the job definition, the job description, the objective setting, all that we have been doing is planning. Planning for good performance. All, the, all what we have discussed on certain objective, you are still planning how to perform well. You can see the time it has taken us to discuss just planning it. But it is a good plan that will ensure good results. Because if you don't plan to succeed, you have planned to fail, it is said. So we need to take time. Now planning, so planning involves job definition, job description, and even understanding that you need this job. Before you create a new job in your company, you must sit down and understand that you need the job. The monitoring, and this is where people don't uh, do it very correct, monitoring. How do you monitor your people? When you have set the objective, you should deliberately sit down with your staff and discuss how far. How far is it? Are there problems? Are there impediments? Are there challenges that is, will make him or her not to succeed? You monitor. I know the place of monitoring, you begin to see areas that need development. The man has challenges. You realize that he cannot use Excel, and he needs Excel to prepare his report. You discover that because as we are discussing, you thought he understand, but suddenly you find that he cannot. So he needs to be trained on Excel, for instance, so that he can prepare his report. You develop the person. You coach the person. All this is happen as the work is progressing. You don't wait until the end of the year or to the end of the month. And in particular, it is advised at least once in two months or once in a quarter, have a deliberate conversation around the job. Official, let us meet on social day once a quarter. We want to discuss your job. How well, what are your problems? And the person will be happy to say what I what he wants to say. And the reviewing is now this is the appraiser. Review. Look at the job. Has it met the expectations and all that? So power is planning all we have done, monitoring involves face-to-face -face conversation around the job, involves observation of the job, involves checking what the person is doing, involves making suggestions for improvement. You are not ready to catch the person at the end of the year that he has not performed. The person has challenges, you are telling him or telling her as the case may be. Developing means training, coaching, helping the person you know, so that the person can do well in the job. And then reviewing, you can ask at the end of the year, at the end of six months, want to do performance evaluation, which is what people now call appraiser. But you can imagine if you have performance management system in place like this, the appraiser time will not be a, a big deal. First, during the period, you have been talking about the issues. You have been helping him to succeed. He has been asking questions. Because at the end of the day, the, the, the essence is to perform. But some people, some managers, want to wait and punish somebody who didn't greet them well. Because I didn't greet them well, so we'll see you at appraiser time. <laughs> I will mark you down, appraiser. How come you didn't greet me well? You understand? So that will not arise. And then rewarding. This is another issue, too. People, the modern thinking is to pay by performance. You know, in the ministry, my sister is a ministry guru. You know, in the ministry, promotion is uh, it's like a long service award. Yeah. You have done three years, you move to the next level. You have done four years, you move to the next level. So that you do exam. <laughs> you do exam and you move to the next level. That's government in here in Nigeria. But companies and most private organizations, they want to pay you according to how you have worked. You know, ministry is like that because their salary does not come from what they have produced. It comes from budget allocation. If they were to be paid based on what they are earning, you know, it may be different. They be different, but they are paid for. That's why they can employ people that don't even need to work hard. That's why they can also refuse to employ people. Maybe they are not teachers; they will not employ. They don't care. You understand? Now, for private sector, you want to be paid according to your work. That is why most companies have what you call variable pay. 
they say part of your pay is going to be based on your performance. Part will be fixed. Fees so that you can pay transport, you can do normal things and all that. Almost in all cases, when you introduce commission, it's because of this kind of rewarding according to performance. But you know that beyond that, beyond that, good companies, the appraiser at the end of the year, the percentage increase that you get will be based on your performance. It's not the MD or the owner just sitting down and say, ah, Monica has done very well this year, give her 20%. Nami has done better, give her 30%. No criteria. And that's what happens. Or, or at least that's what employees think happen. The man may have his own criteria that he has not disclosed to anybody. But because it's not disclosed, the employee doesn't see it as objective. You understand? He doesn't see it as objective way of looking at what they have done. But if, they, if, if it is based on performance, based on what you score the appraiser, that is objective way we have discussed it. If you get 5% and he gets 10%, you know it's your fault. It's, that's what you deserve. And with this kind of uh, reward according to performance, it can be different figure from year to year. You just look at this year, it's looking so bright. We will give the best performer 20%. We we'll scale it down, 15, 10. Next year can be otherwise. So if you are the best performer or perform very highly, score very highly, you get 20%. Next year, you get another 20%. Somebody you enter the company with at the same time, you can be much higher than the person in salary. But it's because you have performed better. And you cannot really begin to think about performance-based reward system if you're not doing a performance management. Because you need to be clear what is the performance of the staff. Because you need to document it. So that when you are doing appraisal, when you are doing annual increase, it should not be the same percentage for everybody. If you give the same percentage for everybody, it removes the motivation effect of it. Ah, if myself don't wear this, let me give it 40%. And you think they are happy. It's not a good day shadow practice. One particular, the guy came here for eight years. He has not got three consecutive good appraisers. But he has gotten one to them bad, one to them bad, one to them bad. Like that, like that. You understand? Because it's not long service award. It's based on your performance. You understand? So sometimes, if we, if we develop this attitude of rewarding people based on their work, it will make them work better. It will make them produce more. It will make them to be more active. When you give a marketer a salary, big salary to go and market, and no commission, it's not the same thing. There are some kind of jobs. The commission may be more than the salary. And, and they'll be so happy to do it. So performance system is already a circle that involves planning, job definition, job description, and all that. Objective setting is part of planning. Up to the issue of knowing the performance measurement criteria is still planning. All what we have said before this stage, you know, you are just setting the stage, you know, to monitor performance. And then you monitor. You don't just say you have set objectives and you leave the staff. And monitor include frequent conversation deliberately around the job. Don't imagine, don't assume. Just have a discussion with staff and know how well they are doing. And if you are a business owner, you are the owner of the business. This is also apply. Ask questions to find out if work is going on as expected. Then we have developing on the job coaching. Share knowledge. Don't hide your knowledge. You know, whatever you know, share it. You know. And then the appraising, this is now really checking how well the person is. And then you can now read very good, good, all those ratings that we talk about. And the reward is how they increase bonus, recognition, appreciation, challenging job. So many things can be done to reward staff. It's not only money. Some people, because they have lunch with the CEO, or they went on holiday to a place without cash in their pocket, they are happy, isn't it? They're very happy. So you can use appreciation. Do you know that it's important how bad the staff is, that they're nothing good about the staff? Well, some people will say, ah, this staff is so rotten, nothing good about it. Once you talk about the staff, it's no. But what I'm saying is that a staff that is so bad, look for an opportunity when it's good in one or two areas. Cash him in that opportunity and recognize him. Yes, we are going to read this one. Did I read the first one? Okay. Performance management.
management system consists of all efforts and activities targeted at ensuring that company goals are consistently met in an effective and efficient manner. Okay, I'm going to read the next one. It involves planning, setting objectives, monitoring performance, developing employees' capacity to perform, periodical evaluation, and taking corrective actions where necessary. It's last one. It focuses on frequent interruptions and getting employees to self in self track their, their performance. See, this is the summary of all what we are doing. When you are in this position, an employee can begin to track his own performance. Am I doing well? Because he has the objective. He has all the criteria to check. So he doesn't need to wait for you to check him or her. Isn't it? Yeah. You are checking yourself whether you are doing well or not. I think this is the last question. Not the last slide, the last question. Yes, who is going to help us? Performance management is a process, unlike performance appraisal, which is an event. How? Yes, we will try. But performance appraisal is a goal, right? Process the objective, some objectives are to Okay, okay, some bad, yes. Performance management, so many steps. Exactly. And the performance appraisal is just one of the steps exactly. in performance management. And we can only appraise if we have holistically done the performance management process. process. That's excellent. You know, it's a process because it's not a one-off thing. You cannot say, we want to do performance management today. Like, we want to do appraisal today. You can't say so. Do you understand? You can say, you can give a date for appraisal, isn't it? You can't give a date for performance management because it's a process. All the monitoring, all the talking, all the developing, they are part of the process. It's a process. We are getting home, gradually. You know, we said PMS. PMS means performance management system and productivity. You know, when you set targets, set objectives, what will it do? It will help employees to understand what you want from them and then they'll be more productive. There will be, there will, this will reduce contentious and frustrating issues in the workplace, which will in turn lead to good and harmonious work environment for maximum productivity. So you can see that if you want to have uh, happy people around you, motivated staff around you, people who are not complaining too much, you should put in place a performance management system that lets them know what they expect from them. Because to focus on the critical areas. Yeah. You see what we are saying, eh, that the performance of an employee is not based on his qualification and experience alone. There are other things. You need to have a good environment that will make the employee feel good. You know, it is said that you can't, motiv you can't really motivate any person. Because you cannot go into somebody's mind to know the motive he has in working. But you can provide an environment, an enabling environment, where everybody will be motivated by whatever appeals to them. So you need to do that. And the performance is a good way. You know what it takes to have an employee have a word? The employee has a say in what he's doing. You're asking him, we are setting an objective, and you're asking for his opinion. Whereas what we are used to is to just give it to this, go and do this. But now you are dialoguing with the person. The person will be happy, obviously. And these are some other things you can employ know what's expected of him. Very critical. You know an employee is taken by surprise. You know what's expected of you and your opinion counts. And you have the opportunity to discuss your challenges. So this system does not recognize a manager who is not accessible. Who employee will be afraid to go and meet? When you want to go and meet your boss to discuss, you are now doing like this, like this first. Because you are afraid of a reaction. This one doesn't allow that. You should be free to discuss. Yeah. Free to discuss. Yeah. You always care about your boss. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> say it out. Your boss is here too. <laughs> say it out. Whatever you say at this seminar, I will not be taking it against you. <laughs> <laughs> so say it out. <laughs> There's no immunity. Uh, so you are still worried. Uh, if I've declared immunity. <laughs> For anything you say in this seminar, cannot be taken against your side here. Yeah. That's, and she has accepted. <laughs> you see, so, sometimes yeah, we are afraid of our bosses for nothing. You understand? We think. But, sorry, sir, I only tell the worker, if you have somebody that is 
Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In anything, even when your boss is going wrong, you are still saying yes, sir, yes, sir. That means you are not a good boy. Excellent. I always call them and tell them. You see, Ella. Excellent. That is good. Don't be afraid to say it. Uh, maybe not review, but you should say it. <laughs> I will tell you. No, don't say it. Yeah. No, I'm using that word. Ah, so, yes. That means there's a way you talk to your, your boss or your friend. Please, that's common. See, this thing is not right. But I suggest that we should do it anyway. You know, your boss will go and sit down and reason. Correct. So, I agree with you, you perfect. Somebody that is just saying yes, I yes, I, that means. Okay. Is it on this? Yeah, basically, I think that would be the personality style of the boss. Mm. I don't command it in your boss. Mm. Because of the personality style. Mm. Some, like for me, I work, I, work, I work with like 100 bosses and they all have different styles. I like, had that issue before. I realized something. Some people that, whatever I see, don't even say anything. Send a mail like a day after. Work for that person. Some people that, no matter what you see, will never listen. All you do is this. Have your Excel projections. In the general, this is probably this is probably this. This is what I have to say, sir. I'm just I'm not, you know this is my guess. I suggest that based on your review <laughs> and approval. So let me I'll put the ball to him now, and I've given my messages inside. So some people just some people somebody can tell you, okay, what do you think? So what I want to dialogue with you. So depends on the person you are dealing with. Yeah, but as managers, we want to be open. I agree with you, but as managers, if we are the managers or we are the owners of it, we should be open. Don't let us be like those who may not be open, it's, it's, uh, you understand? But your, system, your approach is good to deal with people. But as managers and as business owners, we should be open. And like what she said, we should make ourselves available. That nobody is infallible. It's only God that doesn't make mistakes. We should, not, we should not react in a way that will frighten people who work with us. And next time they will not be able to tell us when something is going wrong. That's the point that uh, she's making. And I... I endorse it fully. It's a good one. It's a good one. And our immunity is still on. <laughs> I know it's an opportunity to discuss challenges excites workers, excite people normally. Ah, my boss wants me to tell her or him what is what I need, for instance. Ah, I need this, I need this. It can even be that you want more of this, real old people. <laughs> that look, oh, this off day, ah, can we make it two days? once in two weeks, instead of one day, every week, for instance. So you can see, this example I just gave now, you are not added to the number of days, isn't it? But if that is what the employee prefers, he wants to take the two days once, so taking one day this week, one day next week. If you discuss that, the manager agrees, won't you feel good? You feel good. Meanwhile, you have not added to the number of days, though. but you have made the worker happy because he has a say. You considered his or her opinion. And it's good. What we are discussing with you here, who are managers, you should take it to me and make sure you relate with your people who report to you nicely. Nobody should be afraid to tell you anything. As managers, as business owners, the advice that we must be open. We should not be, people should not be scheming on how to approach us. Is it this way to approach it? Is it this way to approach it? It shouldn't be, isn't it? I didn't know, I thought, I thought that was the last place. One more last, this is now the real last question. Monica, read it. Hey, based on performance, is a win win situation for employer and employee. Is it true? How is it a win win for both? Oh. Okay. Yeah. How? Yeah. When an employee is paid based on their performances, their, their morale will definitely be up because they know when the company is making more money, they are also making more money. And for the employer's part. Okay, that's a good point. When you come making more money, you are also making more money. Good. Mm -hmm. So, also from the employer's part, he also knows that once more money is coming, he also has to pay more. So, it's also a win win situation. When you don't work, you don't get paid. And when you work, you get paid. So, it's good. So, it's something we like to see. Okay, good. So, let's put it in place when it is within our power <laughs> to do so. It's a win win situation, really. Because for the employer, he's happy that you are performing, you are producing, or you are meeting your target. He's happy. He's even the best. If you give target to somebody and it's 
you will be envious. There was a case of somebody who gave a target, that's the market target, of a percent, I can't remember, whether five or ten. But the person got a big, a big deal of about two, three hundred million sales. And the, I think it was more than five percent. The bond was going to be more than five million. And the man was reluctant, I see the money was too big. I said, but that was unfair. You know, if you have agreed a percentage, not an amount, you should do it. It's like if you have 10% now as your, maybe if you bring a client to your company, and you now bring client worth 100 million in a year. That's 10 million, isn't it? Yeah. Some bosses will now feel that, how can I give that person 10 million? What did this is not, but that should be. You must stand by your word. Once you have agreed, you have agreed. Pay by performance, very good. We have all said it, that is what we would like to see. Now let us talk about the benefit of performance management system. Performance management has benefit for the employer and the employee. It benefits both parties. Let's start with the benefits of the employers. Clear focus on the company's strategic objectives. It's an opportunity to focus on what is important to the company, what the goals are, what it wants to achieve in the year. Agreed business priorities for the year. And then committed and engaged employees. Engagement here is on recruitment. Engaged employees are employees that are happy with the system. Employees that are proud of working with the company. And when you have those kind of employees, they are committed to the work and they will produce and be productive in the company. And of course, friendly performance review process. You know, performance review in several companies is full of some level of hostility. People want to wait for what has been done wrong in the past and wait for the appraisal period to say, yes, you did this and you did that. But with a continuous performance management system, the review process is friendly. Friendly because employees know what's expected of them and the employer also knows what's expected of them. And of course, the bottom line is to enhance productivity and lead to increase in profit, which is the bottom line. Now, what are the benefits of the employee? Is there any benefit of PMS to employees? The answer is yes. Employee knows what is expected of him or her. You know, for an employee to know what is expected of him or her is itself motivating. Motivating because the employee knows that when he does this or does that, the employer will be happy with him. And then have standard to evaluate and improve his performance. Be guided by his or her development. And then be motivated you know, to do the job. You know, when you have a performance management system where you discuss with employees from time to time, have a conversation on what challenges he or she has, that employee will be motivated. A lot of time, employees are not able to talk directly with their bosses to know their challenges, to know the difficulties they are facing, and to get help so that they can improve on their performance. And of course, we also talked about paying by performance. Performance-based reward system. One of the benefits of PMS is to know how well employees are performing and to channel payment, reward, recognition according to their performance. Otherwise, when you pay workers without reference to the performance, there will be some inequity or some unfairness in the system. People who may be working so hard or working so well or contributing more to the company may be paid less than others, and that is not fair. A PMS will provide a basis for a fair reward-based compensation system. And of course, we say we have a take-home assignment. Take-home assignment, something we want you to put in practice when you get to your offices, when you get to your businesses. It's exactly what we have done since, but something you need to go and do practically. I agree key performance indicator for each objective, which will be broken down into a short point, like the examples we saw. Very important. And they will say, deliberately set aside time to discuss work and performance at least two weeks. Within two weeks, discuss performance, discuss what challenges they may be, and they insist on monthly activity report. Now, this take home pay is for you to go home and put into practice, and then let's see how that will affect the bottom line of profitability. And then the conclusion the essence of PMA is to develop self motivated employees who key into the objective and the goals of the business. And of course, we have said too that you need to set objectives that are connected to the employees. You set the object collaborative so that the employees know what is expected of them. And of course, finally, after all that you have done, employees who have no good character, who have no good attitude, who will not change despite all the effort, 
There's nothing wrong if you ask such employees to leave the system. Thank you for your attention. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Esomodo. I work with Panera Microfinance Bank. Uh, I came for the training, performance management training here at Berkeley Consulting Limited. I've been able to learn that objective being set by the employee and the employer brings a connection between these two parties and it helps the employee get involved and more involved into decision making that will make him more appreciated and more valued in terms of doing better and adding more value to the company. And also I learned that adding this motivation to these employees makes them want to do more. And after doing more, the company gains more. So it's a win-win situation. Then, lastly, my feedback to the company is actually to let us know that more time is needed to elucidate more on this particular topic because most employees don't know this. I think that's for me, it's the only area I think we need to work on. My name is Jenev Ibononeju. I work for Royal Oaks Events Limited and I work as a business development executive. Um, today I attended a seminar here and it was basically about uh, managing people, managing staff. Okay, I learned quite some new things and new strategies and one of the take-home um, lessons I learned today is that I have to dialogue with my uh, staff, especially people who are working with me. I don't have to be rigid, I have to make myself accessible to them. And that is one of the highlights, one of the uh, things, important things I learned today. The training was quite insightful, very interesting, um, it was very interactive and that's the part I like most. We had opportunity to ask questions, we had opportunity to air our views and it was very, very entertaining. Okay, also, I think this training should be made open, not just to managers, but to general staff, you know, to also carry them along and enlighten them on other things they should know and how they can also uh, behave to um, end up being value-adding staff to the company. Thank you very much. My name is Monica Nesigbe. I work with Royal Oaks Event Limited. I'm the CSC Customer Service Executive. The training was wow. In fact, I learned something about, I would say one thing I take home, I'm taking home is all about commitment. Being committed to whatever you're doing, with your staff, with your employers, with your employee, and the rest of that. I would like to say a very big thank you to Berkeley Consulting Limited. A very big thank you. And I wish this training we not just end here, but we keep rolling and rolling and rolling. As we touch lives, the company also will be touched by God. Thank you very much, and I wish you all well. My name is Ayobam Deli Kalejai. I'm the managing partner and the owner of the Metropolitan, which is a group of companies in the real estate, energy, consulting, and technology. Uh, basically, the training today was very awesome for me, basically, because I've been overstretched of recent and I needed something to help me manage the subunits better. I actually had this way of trying to track it with my phones, but sometimes I get overwhelmed. Then I have here give me a good way and approach actually not only to plan it, I could also implement it, monitor, control, and analyze it, which makes it a very, very awesome package. And I feel anybody should actually get involved in this. And I would say the price was actually very, very pocket friendly. Which I was expected. When I started training myself, and I, I was expecting something like a green job, maybe 150, 200k. But when I had to pay, I would, unfortunately, I couldn't pay online. I had to come down here, and so I was well received, even when I was lit. And I still learned a whole lot more. I would say this is a very good one, and I expect more from them as well. So good trainings, good environment, good ambience. My name is Mr. Ake Alakija, and I work with the Alakinsin Confectioner. We bake cakes and cookies, and we supply supermarkets and other outlets in Lagos. Uh, the seminar of today has been very impacting. Uh, I've gained a lot, especially in the area of uh, performance appraisal system. Uh, I was used to old system of appraisal, which is always at the end of the year, the appraisal staff. But this one we learned today about performance a performance uh, management system. It's a way of uh, monitoring performance of your staff right from day one, along the whole year, at the end of the year, so that is at the end of the year, you'll be able to now look back, and the staff as well is able to look back and appraise himself. We have gained a lot 
we are really appreciate what we have learned today and we is our belief that this should be extended to as many organizations as possible in Nigeria because this is a new system of appraisal which is going to actually reposition companies to be able to appraise very well so that everybody be happy. Today's seminar has been very impactful. I've learned new things. As far as the performance management appraisal is concerned, it's an eye-opener and uh, that shows that there is more to the performance appraisal that we have been doing. That actually the performance is very supposed to be holistic and it's supposed to be something that spans a long time and it is an ongoing process. The whole seminar was was good, interactive, and uh, a, a learning process. Everyone, I assume, learns because I learned something from the interaction. And uh, I thank Beckley Consultant for the opportunity. It has uh, opened and widened our horizon. A better way for me to do my business. I really appreciate that.